Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kayla here. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on Mind Hunter by John Douglas and Mark Olshaker. I just recently finished this and it took me a little while. I, I think it took me like two weeks. It's a true crime book and there is a series on Netflix called Mind Hunter that was based and inspired off of this book. And the series is so good. If you have not seen it yet, go watch it. I binged it in two days. There's 10 episodes. I've already rewatched them again. There, I, The second season is supposed to come out this year, but it hasn't yet. And I don't even think that they've given a date yet, which makes me crazy, but I'm patiently waiting. <laughs> so in the meantime, um, I, wanted to I wanted to read the book that the show was based on. But actually, this was a book that I had been interested in reading before the, the show even became a show. I didn't realize I read the beginning of this before. I read it um, in an ebook years ago, and I didn't finish it for some reason. I can't remember why. I do that sometimes. But this book was originally published in 1997? Let me see. No, 1995. This book was originally published in 1995. So it's older and it's a little outdated. And he even says this, and I think he's written, I mean, he's written more books on this topic and and stuff, uh, but, but it's a little dated. But for the most part, I mean, it's still really good. And uh, yeah, so I read it and I loved it. I think I gave it, four out of five stars. Yeah, I gave it four out of five stars. If you have not heard of this book and you don't know anything about it, I'll read the back so you can have an idea of what it's about. So it says, during his 25 year career with the investigative support unit, special agent John Douglas became a legendary figure in law enforcement, pursuing some of the most notorious and sadistic serial killers of our time. The man who hunted prostitutes for sport in the woods of Alaska, the Atlanta child murderer, and Seattle's Green River Killer, the case that nearly cost Douglas his life. As the model for Jack Crawford in The Silence of the Lambs, Douglas has confronted, interviewed, and studied scores of serial killers and assassins, including Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, and Ed Gein, who dressed himself in the victim's peeled skin. Using his uncanny ability to become both predator and prey, Douglas examines each crime scene, reliving both the killer's and the victim's actions in his mind, creating their profiles, describing their habits, and predicting their next moves. Now in chilling detail and featuring a new introduction, Mindhunter takes readers behind the scenes of some of John Douglas's most gruesome, fascinating, and challenging cases, and into the dark recesses of our worst nightmares. So if you have seen Silence of the Lambs, it, there are parts that were inspired by John Douglas and the work he did. If you like that show, um, oh my god, what is it called? Criminal Criminal Minds? If you like that show Criminal Minds, you're gonna love this book. If you're a true crime fan, you're gonna love this book. So yeah, that's a little bit about what it's about. I just want to give a spoiler warning. This video will have spoilers going forward. I'm gonna be talking about the book what happens in the book, some of my thoughts on the book, and if you haven't read this and you want to read it, I suggest stop watching now <laughs> and um, go pick it up because it's really good. All right, so on to the book. So this was not what I expected it would be. I thought, I, I'll tell you what it is. It The first half of the book is more autobiographical for John Douglas. It kind of shows us, like literally half of the book is like him through his life, how he got to the point of being involved with law enforcement and the FBI. So we get a little bit of his life, some of the stuff he went through, just stuff like that. So it was interesting. It's not... It, it almost seems like if you're comparing this book to this to the show Mindhunter the book as soon as you get to the middle is when it really starts and and that's kind of what I was kind of reading it for so then the second half of the book 
is about his involvement in several cases, murder cases, serial killer cases, abductions, negotiations, stuff like that. And it's very factual. There are, there's a lot of information. It also, that's, that's pretty much what it's about. Now what I was thinking and hoping it was about, I, I was hoping that it largely would focus on his, his actual study of serial killers. Kind of how, I mean I wouldn't say that the show really focuses on that, but that's my favorite part of the show is the, the moments where he's visiting these killers and interviewing them and talking to them and then later on discussing what he's learned and, and I love watching the birth of the term serial killer and you know the organized killer versus the disorganized killer like all of that is super fascinating so I was hoping that this book was really just a kind of telling of his journey through the project of gathering information and, and learning how to profile a crime scene. And it really wasn't that, it was more, it was more, I mean there was a little bit of that, but I wanted more, like I really wanted to just, I basically just want transcripts of his interviews with the serial killers, that's basically what I want. And I don't get that. He does touch on some stuff, like his interview with Ed Kemper, and I think he talks about his interview with Richard Speck and some other some other uh, killers and it's super interesting there's also what it largely is at least the second half is him talking about the cases he's gone through and him kind of talking about like like I said it's real factual so there's lots of so basically he'll talk about a case and say like this is how they this is what was happening these are the people who went missing here are the people who the bodies that were found these are the circumstances this is how the local police or whatever called the FBI in and how him and some of his other co-workers would go around the country to these places and study you know what they can and come up with a profile sometimes they would help um, catch them you would kind of help find suspects, um, help with, basically, the, the help them, help local police catch these guys. And that is super fascinating. I did learn a lot from this book. I learned a lot more, because I mean, I'm a true crime person. I love reading about this stuff and watching this stuff. So I feel like I know a decent amount already. I mean, I'm not like an expert or anything. But I did learn new things in this book, which made me really happy. So it's just some new things about profiling, some of the like things you should do and, and you shouldn't do. Like he says, and, and, and some of this you can see in the show. So like if you have a hostage situation, he says that something you shouldn't do is talk to the hostage, or not the hostage person, talk to the person who's taking people hostage with like a bullhorn, like screaming and yelling and being very authoritative and very not negotiable that you shouldn't do because it will it will make them agitated blah 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 and then he'll say like what you should do and how you shouldn't give in to their demands a hundred percent because in one case this guy was he really wanted to see his wife and the inexperienced officers there brought her to the scene and as soon as he got to talk to her or see her he shot himself in the head and yes he didn't harm anybody else but you still don't want any deaths and he said that if they hadn't brought the wife you know that probably wouldn't have happened hopefully he would have been able to talk him down so just stuff like that so that was super interesting another tidbit I learned was about staging so typical like cops can tell when a crime scene has been staged and usually almost like 99 percent of the time when a crime scene is staged to look like something else than what it really was like you know there's a murder and it it's 
made to look like it was a burglary. But there are ways you can tell that this is not a burglary. He says that 99% of the time it is a family member or somebody very close to that person that committed the crime. Like that's almost always because if it's just some random outsider, they don't care what the crime scene looks like. They're not, they're just in and out. But if it's someone that's close to them, they, they don't want it connected to them. So they will make it look like something to distance themselves from the crime. So that was super interesting. I mean, that might be obvious to some people, but it was like just hearing it said out, like just seeing him spell it out basically it was super like, oh my gosh, I never realized that. And um, also some tricks like he's just, oh, he's so smart. And he even says that the reason why he's so good at what he does is just because he of the thousands and thousands of cases that he has seen and gone over and read and studied and been involved in, you learn things and him studying and talking to and interviewing these killers, serial killers, rapists, all of them, he learns a lot. He learns why they do what they do, why they choose this person over this person. Why do you, why did you change your MO? Just like little things. And, and he, and you can kind of, you can kind of see a pattern. So that was super interesting. I think that was probably one of my favorite things about the book was just the tidbits of information, the tidbits of delving into his mind of how he does what he does. He doesn't go into super detail. Like sometimes he'll say, he'll describe a murder, a series of murders that's going on right now. And he'll say that, okay, I looked over the crime scene and the photos and the file. And after a few hours, this was my profile. You're looking for a white male, early 20s to late 20s. He will be living at home with a female figure. He's been divorced twice. He'll be driving a brown or red, like a, I don't know, he'll be driving a like red car that's probably like five years old not well maintained he will have been in the army but dropped out and like just these super specific things and you're just like how like how did you get there and in some of the ways and there are a few times where he does tell you how he got there and once he goes through his logic you're like oh yeah okay that makes sense but still there's something about him that he can make those leaps and he can he can see things that I'm just like, I don't know how you know this. Like, I just don't know. But, so that's super interesting. And I think part of that is, is done on purpose because he doesn't want to give away all his secrets of the trade, you know? <laughs> so yeah, this book was really good. I loved it. I was hoping it was something different, which is why it's only four out of five stars but it was really good. I learned a lot, something that was kind of weird. And yeah, this book was published in 1995. And at the very end of the book, he talks about two serial killers, two cases of serial killers that he is currently working on. And they currently don't know who they are. And I'm sitting here reading this in 2019 being like, I know who they are. <laughs> it's just crazy. Cause like, and also one th another thing I love about this book is that all of the chapters are named something interesting. And then once you read the chapter, you're like, oh, I, I see why you named it that way. Kind of like a book title. You ever love when you read a book and you're like, why is it said, why is the book title this? It's weird. And then when you read it, you're like, mm, I know, I know. <laughs> His, his chapters do that. So like, so this very last chapter that I'm talking about is called Sometimes the Dragon Wins. That's the name of the chapter. So the last chapter is Sometimes the Dragon Wins. And he says how a coworker of his had this, this like pin or like magnet or something on his, one of his boards at work. And it said Sometimes the Dragon Wins. And it's kind of like a reminder that as much as you can do as much hard work as as you as you put in sometimes cases are not solved and he kind of is talking about like Jack the Ripper 
you know, the Zodiac Killer, where you don't have, or um, the Black Dahlia, the killer of Elizabeth Short. So he's talking about that sometimes the dragon wins. And in this chapter, he's talking about two serial killers that he's kind of saying sometimes the dragon wins, as in, we have not caught this person. And these two cases have been going on for a long time. And the two cases he's talking about is the Green River Killer and BTK. And to hear him describe these murders and describe how long they've been going on and what they've done so far to try and catch them, but they have not caught them, it's kind of like freaky. It's like, oh my gosh, I know who they are. <laughs> you know, the, the Green River Killer is Gary Ridgway and the BTK Killer is Dennis Rader. And so I'm like screaming at the book, it's Dennis Rader. <laughs> um, but it's just interesting how he's, how he's, I don't want to say he's not hopeful. Like he just kind of says there's a possibility that we will never know who these killers are. They could be like Jack the Ripper. They could be like the Zodiac Killer. And it just makes me so happy to think like, just wait, John Douglas in a few more years you're gonna find out who these people are you're gonna catch them so that made me happy that was kind of weird to read um so yeah but other than that i really loved this book you can totally tell that it was written by a law enforcement person because there's so much information there's so many names and official titles he'll use and he'll use the entire title of the police department in this city and that state and, and so there's a lot of information coming at you a lot of dates he does jump around a lot like he'll talk about a murder that happened in 1980 and then he'll talk about a murder that happens in 1989 and then he'll go back to 1970s and so he does jump around a lot and and stuff but for the most part it's pretty organized and it's it's really interesting I wouldn't say that this book is really anything like the show the show is much more it's 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 loosely based it's inspired by this book because you know the guy's name in the show is not john douglas but you know some of these characters in the show are based off of real people like john douglas and oh what's the other guy's name i don't i can't think of his name and another thing is like some big instances that happen in the show are literally like a paragraph long in here so like the one of the biggest one of the biggest issues that comes up in the show is that there's a there's a principal there's a school principal in some town that the teachers were coming to the guy Holden his name's Holden in, in the show and they were like I'm concerned about him because he tickles the kids feet and he gives them nickels for like enduring it and they're worried and they're freaked out about it and they are scared it's going to turn into something else and so it becomes this huge issue where he kind of struggles like is this even my department is this even something the fbi looks in can you persecute somebody based on what they might do so there's it's and it, it spans a lot of episodes there's a lot of arguments involved and and stuff like that and in the book this is mentioned but it's literally like a paragraph <laughs> so there are times where the show will take bits and pieces of this book that's literally like a line or two long and they run with it which is super interesting because in the book I'm like well how did you get there like how did that happen and stuff like that so that's really interesting so it's not a whole lot like like the show so if you really love the show based on the drama you probably are not gonna like this book it like I said this is largely informational largely autobiographical based on his career and stuff so yeah but it was really interesting I'm super glad I read it and yeah that's pretty much it go pick it up <laughs> um, uh, thank you guys for watching and if you have read this book what did you think about it what did you like about it what didn't you like about it if you've read any other true crime books kind of like this put them down in the comments because I would love to read more of them <laughs> so so yeah thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video bye <sighs> what do I have to say about this book um it is 
it's true crime. It is all nonfiction, so none of this is fictionalized, obviously. If you have not heard this book, if you're a true crime fan, you're blah, blah, blah. if you're a true crime, just kill me. So the beginning, the the first half of the book is an autobiography. But, but there are ways that you can tell it's not a blur. Oh my god, I can't say this word. But he even says in this book that you can, like, there are certain things that you can't control. So you think, you know, if you, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. I just won't, I'm not going to explain that part. It, I wouldn't say it's anything like the book. I'm sorry. This book was published in 1997 or 1995. God, I keep getting it wrong. 